Hey everybody, it's me Margaret on a gloomy day here in Mississippi. But I figured if I sat by the Christmas tree then we might liven things up a little bit with some brightness. Just a few days before Christmas. It's not it's 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 here before I knew it. The season has flown by. But um I do have some some things to show you. Uh first and foremost, I've had this you know, I, I saved throughout the years, the year, the hats that I want to donate. I had sent a bunch to Yolanda, and I sent some, brought some with me to Vermont when I went to visit Aaron and Kristen, and then I had one bag left. So our church adopts families um, through an organization called MADCAP, Madison County and Allied Against Poverty. And that's the people that I donate to when, when I have my hats. So the church had a group of volunteers that were going to take the gifts that we had all collected to the Madcap facility. And my husband was one of the people going, and he said, do you want me to take that bag? I said, oh, yeah, I'll do that. So they did, and of course the gifts were going, they were very organized about, you know, these were going to certain families and, you know, had the names on them, and I was, you know, very organized. So then here was this random bag of, of hats, and they, he said that the people were having a great time pulling out, like, the elf hats and um, whatnot. And speaking of the elf hats, the reason they looked like piggies before was I forgot to put their hair, their hair on them. So that did help a little bit. So anyway, um, yeah, they got a kick out of those patterns. So, um... Anyway, to make a long story short, they said they were going to take them, they had to go out to visit some of the elderly people. They don't have heat, um, a lot of them don't have running water, so they go and check on the elderly people on a regular basis to make sure that they're okay and what they've got and do whatever they can to help them, um, in addition to all the other things that they do at this place. So they said, we're going to take these hats, and hats with us and let them kind of go shopping through it, and I thought, well, that's a great idea. And she said, um, tell your wife to check Facebook. Maybe we can put a picture of something up there. So I did, and there was a picture. And uh, so that was fun, because I never get to see the recipients of, of the stuff. So, But anyhow. Here's one of the pictures um, when they were delivering. The lady knocking on the door is holding a hat and scarf. And then in this picture, you can see one of them modeling a hat and scarf set. And... Um, the other one has a snowman scarf on. You can't see it. But I'm going to read you this caption that went with these pictures. Picture of Madcap. Today, Madcap's elves loaded the SUV sleigh with food boxes, stockings filled with apples, oranges, candy canes, and warm throw, hats, and socks. And then we spent the day visiting with just a few of our elderly clients. We saw empty refrigerators and cupboards, termite-devoured wood, mattresses with no sheets, and the most joyous and faith-filled folks you could imagine. My heart is both heavy and blessed beyond words. It seems to me I've been saving up things to tell you, so I, <laughs> I may have to stop right here and insert some information. I finished this hat too, the moose hat, and it is a wreck on so many levels. First of all, as you can see how wrinkly it is, I totally messed up my floats and they are just too tight. You can't, they're, they're pulling in. See how it's wrinkled? And then there's like a place where I have a gap. I don't see, look, that's a bad pull. You see that right there? And I don't even see it now, but there, there is, that's it. Look. Look, a big old gap. Not sure what happened there. And on top of it all, it's too big. I thought maybe I'd wear it just myself, and because it's longer, it would be slouchy, and you really wouldn't be a big deal if it was wrinkly. But it's too big all around here, so I don't even think I can give that to anybody in the state that it's in, but live and learn. And you know, as a matter of fact, I seem to have had big hat-itis. Because look at this next one. I tried to modify a pattern with this brunette softy chunky and I failed miserably. It had a wrap and a button and I, I didn't put it on there and forgot to account for that so it came out huge too. 
This is from a restaurant slash store that is right around the corner from our house. And here they had a little display of handmade knit and crochet items. The music was so loud in this place that I, I had to mute it and add my narration here for you. But you can see it. I've never seen that kind of yarn before. Oh, there's anything. You can buy anything in this store. It's like a really nice gift shop. Um, some pretty upscale gifts are actually in here too. It's really a, a quick stop where you get gas, but... You can get all this stuff, too. This yarn was totally new to me. It looks like scraps that they've held together. And while you look at it up close, it's kind of weird looking, but the overall effect was kind of neat. And wasn't this guy adorable? Okay, I'll go ahead. What have I got recently here? I have um, been knitting again. This is some chroma worsted, uh, Knit Picks chroma worsted, and it's the end of a skein that I had. I had already done one hat, and I had some more left over, so I did this one, and it's just a little person hat. And the pattern is called the Regular Guy Beanie, and I had first seen this when um, Danielle had done this. And I thought, well, that is a great basic hat, and I don't know if it's called the regular guy beanie or the regular guy beanie. I don't know what it's talking about, but it's a basic knitted hat. Two by two ribbing, stockinette decreases up at the top. So it's a really great pattern. So I used up the end of that and I have another skein of chroma worsted and a skein, excuse me, of chroma worsted and I'm not sure of the colorway uh, that Erin had given me as a gift. So I need to go dig that out and look at it because I love working with this yarn. The only thing that I can say negative about it, and it's really not a negative, is can you see how some of the stitches, it looks maybe loose? Well, it's not. It's just that some of this yarn is fatter in places than in other places. So it's like it'll get really thin and then it'll get fat and that sort of thing. Um, very similar to Red Heart Unforgettable, but this rips out a little bit easier. <laughs> We had this discussion. Somebody had asked me if it was a problem for me to rip out Red Heart Unforgettable, and, and it is because the little fuzzies kind of tie themselves together. And this does have fuzzies. This is like the upscale big brother of the, the Red Heart Unforgettable. But both are fine. Both are, are great yarns, and I enjoy them. But I was doing these decreases with my double-pointed needles. And it's difficult for me and awkward, but I had never figured out magic loop. Well, lo and behold, look what I'm doing. I figured out magic loop. So I'm doing the decreases on this hat, which is another uh, regular guy beanie. But I'm doing this with Red Heart Super Saver. Earth and Sky is the colorway for this. It's been in my cabinet for ages. And, you know, this time last year, I had decided it was time to clean out my scrap cabinet. And so I started creating mostly with the Addy <laughs> and, and with crochet, where I would take my bits and pieces and turn them into hats and try to use them. So I'll probably go into that scrap mode here shortly because it's starting to bug me. That's, that's how this came about, was that that little bit was sitting there and I said, you know, I just have to use that up before I allow myself to jump into my wonderful yarn. I keep walking past all my webs purchases and I'm, I need to stop staring at them. That's what I do is I stop and look at them and pick them up. You know, no, I need to use them, but they're so special and I need to use up my scraps and na, 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 na. so anyway, that's where that goes. Okay, um, that's all I have to tell you right now. But I have some more information saved about crafting Jen's gift. Um, my Secret Santa recipient was Jen of Jen Likes Yard, if you watch her videos. And um, I had, I made her a bag, which of course you've seen my, my project bags before. And I don't know what else I made, but the main thing I made, I handcrafted, was I etched glass using my silhouette to make stencils and then 
I etched the glass and it was really a challenge but it's so much fun it's um you know a project that you finish in a matter of a couple of hours max depending on how intricate your design is which is really nice you know and then you're done with that so um I'll walk you through that and there might be a few other things that I had been saving up to tell you but um take a peek so glass etching is something that I got really excited about um, using my silhouette to make the stencils. So first I practiced on an old jar with my initials and, and then I got so excited I pulled out a baking dish. I believe I showed all this to you in another video. So I moved on to making a set of glasses for Jen for Secret Santa. And here I have already chosen my design and cut it out in silhouette and I'm in the process of weeding, which is removing the parts that I want the glass etching cream to touch onto the glass. Okay, then you apply the vinyl stencil onto the glass. It is, and that's tricky. I had to slip the edges so that it would fit around the curved part. And there it is, all nice and stuck, just like I need it to be. So I took painter's tape and filled in all the slits and around some edges that I did not want to get etching cream on. I had to be very careful with that because even if it touches it for a short time, it, it will mar the glass. So you get the etching cream, which is about I don't know, $10, something like that, it'll last you forever. You put it on, leave it on the recommended amount of time. And when I finished, there are the glasses. Now, after all that, watch me drop them and break them. Oh dear. I'm really enjoying my silhouette. Look at this cute little tag I made to go on one of the presents. And these tags, so precious. And this is a little tiny gift bag I created. Finley and I just got back from the mailbox and what should appear, what to my wondering eyes should appear, but a gift of some sort from Cora Collender. We always laugh because our last names are so similar. She just has a C. And we don't. Cora, this is a total surprise. And it's got fragile written all over it. So I'm a little nervous here. yarn. It's our mantra. It's what we always know to be true. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? Oh, buttons! No sugar to tempt me too. That was extra special. Oh, beautiful buttons of all different shapes and sizes. Some of them have patterns on them. Can you see that? The flowers? Wow! Cora, you sweet and thoughtful thing. Oh my word. What a nice surprise. Thank you. Okay, hug through the camera. You know, all that. <laughs> Thank you. Look at all these great buttons. Sorted them mostly by color. I have such a good time doing that with puzzle pieces too. Then I get confused, like, is this blue or is that green? So I'll put it in with the blue family. There's the blacks. You can't see them very well, but some have little patterns on them. Look, ropes in the pretzel shape. 
Oh, you're out of place. Get over there. And all these that have patterns and pictures. Wasn't this great? And my wonderful mug. Thank you, Cora. I also want to thank Deborah Keep for sending me this precious interactive advent calendar. I've had more fun with this thing. It has two parts. This is the family room and each day you click on a numbered book and it opens up to tell you some interesting fact about history of the practices of European Christmas. And then you go out to the marketplace and you, I mean, you can just sit and watch the marketplace without clicking anything, and it's absolutely beautiful. It has daytime and nighttime, and clock rings, and oh, it's fantastic. But you can also click one of the numbered ornaments, uh, and it will take you to, it'll put on a little show for you based on whatever it was you read that day. And it is absolutely adorable. I can't say the na lady's name, I think it's Jackie Lawson. Um, but you can see it here, and certainly, I mean, anybody would, would love this gift. There's e-cards and advents, and it is wonderful. I finally made my dough ornaments, and I'm going to show you that experience in a separate video. I'll probably get that up here shortly. It's not a tutorial just my experience as I fumbled my way through that. So um, yeah, I'll probably get that up very shortly. And then nothing until after Christmas. So I wish you all a happy holidays and um, when I come back it'll be time to talk about the new year. Talk to you soon. Bye.